Peterborough is an old city, but is a laboratory for a very new politics. Breakthrough parties on the up, old ways of thinking, political religions being reformed and challenged by those preaching a different gospel. Chief among them, the Brexit Party. This is a seat which voted 60% to leave in 2016, but it's also a classic Labour Tory marginal, swapping hands between the two since 1910. A breakthrough here would be a major shock to the system, yet they're now the favourites. I think it sends a message to Parliament that the people feel betrayed, that the people don't trust them anymore, that they have failed to deliver on one choice in the last three years that they said they would deliver on. And I think it, it should send strong concerns because I think it will be the crack in the door that will open to a flood of Brexit candidates. This is the first by-election for a long time, which is conceivably said to be three-way, four-way, even five-way split. That's why it's just so unbelievably unpredictable. The vote is bisected and dissected and split on every axis imaginable. But if the Brexit party can do it, it will be a remarkable feat. It took UKIP 20 years to get a parliamentary foothold. This party might do it in less than 20 weeks. This was a seat held by Labour with a narrow 600 majority until their MP Fiona Onasania was recalled following a perjury trial. Their new candidate, Lisa Forbes, has likewise been mired in some controversy over claims of anti-Semitism. She declined us an interview. Though on the ropes, Labour's local organisation is strong. You can't rule them out, but you can sense just how much of a bind the party is in. As in the locals and the Euros, their vote fracturing for different reasons in different directions. I have got quite a nasty feeling that the Brexit Party will do quite well in it. They're polling the top at the moment. Yeah. Um, Labour Party can't seem to decide which way they want to go. Just Jeremy Corbyn. Corbyn. Yeah, yeah, because he, he, um, he doesn't seem like a very good politician. Labour can do anything to win you back. I think I think if they've got off the fence about Brexit. Um, I think Jeremy Corbyn's handling of Brexit has been an absolute shambles. This is a big problem. Labour unexpectedly took the seat in 2017 by bringing the Remain vote together. Okay. The Lib Dems and Remain. Yeah. Now the Lib Dems are snapping at their heels. If you look at the uh, European elections, you look at our recent success in the uh, local elections here in Peterborough, you see that more and more people are saying that's the key issue of the day and those are the kind of options we have. We're saying let's have a, a second referendum, let's have the opportunity to say that the deal we have now within the European Union is the best deal for Britain. But they're not the only ones snapping. The Greens are hopeful too. I think the two-party deadlock has been broken this year and I think this could potentially be the start of that. I hope it is and I hope the Green Party continues to make uh, strong inroads. What was striking in Peterborough is that barely anyone mentioned the Tories. It's as if the Brexit party wasn't only the party of leavers but of the right of centre too. The Conservatives, like Labour, declined us an interview. But one of their leadership hopefuls was around to do what he could whilst unwittingly showing how difficult it will be to keep the Tory tribe together. And why would they possibly give you a better deal if you're not prepared to walk away? If you're going to... Appropriately enough, Catherine of Aragon, Henry VIII's first wife, is buried here. She was a casualty of this country's first break with Rome. It's possible that the two-party system, under unprecedented strain, will likewise be a victim of our second. Lewis Goodall, Sky News, Peterborough.